So welcome everybody and thanks for joining us today. You're all from different industries and there's different things going on in this COVID world. So why don't you each just quickly introduce yourselves and tell us what your industry is and then we'll get around and then we'll go around again and ask you what changes have been happening in your industry. So Monica, why don't we start with you? Sure, um, my name is Monica Quinn. Um, I am the festival director of a independent film festival called Moving Arts Film Festival. We are located here in Los Angeles. And um, one of the things that we focus on is inclusion of um, Black, Indigenous, people of color, women in film, uh, actors with disabilities, LGBTQ community, and yeah, and bringing those voices, those underrepresented voices uh, to light. So with those stories. Great, thanks for joining us and Rogers. Hi, I'm, I'm Rogers Healy, located in Dallas, Texas. My company is Healy Global Relocation, and we help our clients that are high net worth, high profile with all their buying, selling, and leasing needs all over the world. We also help them move, whether it's their pet, like our friend with the beautiful uh, dog uh, today, or their car, their personal belongings. But yeah, just anything with real estate and moving, that is what we do here at Healy Global Relocation. Check. And Jennifer, how about you? I'm Jennifer Cosentino, General Manager for the Green Granite Inn in North Conway, New Hampshire. Um, we are a hotel and welcoming guests this summer, which has been very exciting. Okay, terrific. So let's jump into it. Monica, why don't you start and tell us what has changed in your industry in this COVID world? Well, I think the biggest change, obviously, is that movie theaters are completely shut down. So that has completely taken out a part of the industry that people, I don't think people were expecting. I don't think people were expecting film festivals to get affected. And so that's something we can't offer our filmmakers. So um, film festivals quickly had to uh, become more innovative, uh, find tech companies to team up with, find a way to bring it online and bring it virtual, which has definitely uh, opened some wonderful possibilities. Um, but yeah, things are definitely different than how they were before uh, COVID. So let me just ask you this, with film festivals going virtual, it means people, you know, it's no longer a community event anymore. That means people can join from anywhere in the world. Is that a positive or a negative? I guess you can attract a bigger audience, but now you're in competition with every single other film festival, right? I think that's absolutely true. Um, but I feel like you were also in competition before with every other film festival. I mean, uh, film festivals are always vying for submissions for filmmakers. Um, you know, there's certain platforms where you attract films, but again, they have access to every film festival there is. So I think that competition existed before COVID. And now I think actually it gives um, the underdog a way to rise up in a way, if you're quick with how you're going to innovate, if you're quick with how you're going to offer something, how you're going to create community in this digital world, um, then I think you all are almost at an advantage as to where before the bigger, the bigger film festivals definitely um, took that, all that competition. So, Rogers, how about you? How have things changed in your world? Sure. I, I think the response would be everything is different and everything is the same. You know, I think that, you know, re real estate, especially residential, everyone needs a place to live. And on the commercial side of things, a lot of people needed a place to work. And then a lot of people also want a place to go on the weekend. So, you know, the month of March and really most of April was just kind of, it, it, we didn't know what the heck was going on. It was kind of a mess. And I think it gave people, especially in industries like mine, just the chance to recalibrate and put priorities in place. And in the world of real estate, you know, priority is your family and it's where you're going to live. So we've seen the six busiest months we've ever seen. I've done this for 20 years. It's the six busiest months we've ever seen in history, not just for my company, but for our for our city and, you know, for really the, the market all across the world, except for a few places that have just been unfortunate. So it, it's been crazy. So we had to do in the oldest historical sales job ever, a real estate agent, we had to go and learn how to be tech happy and how to rely on things that we didn't rely on in the past. And that's computers and that's technology differently. So, yeah, our industry has changed in the sense that like we had no option but to be agile. But it's also been, you know, refreshing knowing that people still, you know, they're going to always be looking for something to make them feel safe and comfortable and at home. And right now, being home, 
looks a little bit different where you probably need things you didn't need prior to March. So yeah, we, we've just shifted and, and we've followed the trends and in a lot of ways we've helped set the trends. So um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it's, it's caused us to be creative, which we've all been very grateful for. So why has it been so busy? Is that because people are leaving the cities for other environments or they need a house with different, you know, they have different needs now? Why is it so busy? Sure. I mean, it's a, it's a really, it's a combination of a lot of things. If you think about, like, obviously there was a max, ex, there's been a mass exodus for the last few years from California, right? And then since the beginning of this year, there's been a mass exodus from New York City. And those people are moving. And when, you know, it's just supply and demand, which is economics 101. And if you're going to go from New York City to Jersey, and all of a sudden one show in a day turns into 15, it, it changes things. So we've just seen this stuff shift dramatically. And when people like me, I've worked out of my office for literally 20 years. And the past seven months, I've been working from home. And, I, you know, just like the rest of us, we figured out how to do it. We figured out how to be agile with something like, you know, a, a movie, like it's historically in a movie theater. How do you bring it to your home? We had to do the same kind of adjustment. And it, we didn't have the option but to make it work. And Jennifer, how about you? Now, I know the um, hotel industry is suffering. I just read a report that one in four U.S. hotels is in danger for closure. Is that correct? And how are things going for you? So I think it really depends on the location and where you are as far as the hotel. So I'm in North Conway, New Hampshire. It's a beautiful location surrounded by the White Mountain National Forest. Plenty of social distancing up there. So we had phenomenal numbers through the summer and early fall. Um, I think for us, and I echo Roger, is that it's the same but different. People come to the hotel, they want it to be the same, trying to show them what has changed, educate them on what has changed versus the guidelines and whatnot that has been set out. So for us in North Conway, there has not been a lot of change as far as occupancy. We actually could have had a higher occupancy this summer had we been able to staff the hotel um, fully, which has certainly been a challenge for us. So why is it so hard to staff the hotel? People just aren't willing to work in that industry? Or it seems like people should be looking for jobs, no? I think there's a few reasons for that. I think, one, you know, you are working in the service industry in the world of COVID and making people comfortable and understanding the, uh, the things we have in place to protect them as staff. Um, certainly has has hampered that a little bit and honestly there was a nice little benefit if you were on unemployment this summer and i think people took advantage of that to have the summer off and not have to work and have the extra six hundred dollars certainly impacted our industry in our area we we had already had a challenge trying to find staff prior to covid hitting that challenge became even greater once everyone was able to collect the extra bonus on unemployment. So it suffered, it really affected us immensely to a point there were times when we could not sell all of our hotel rooms because we did not have enough staff to clean them. We all know about, you know, cleaning and social distancing and masks and stuff, but is there anything we're not aware of? There's certainly social distancing. We have all of the markers. We have the plexiglass in front of our front desk. But not being able to do the overnight service if you're here for more than one night, that's been impactful. So let me just guess, get this right. You don't have overnight service, meaning you're not going in and cleaning the rooms, changing the towels and that kind of thing. Is that right? Correct. We are not allowed per New Hampshire government orders. Um, we are not allowed to enter an occupied room at this time. Um, so we can leave fresh towels. We can leave fresh amenities. Um, for them outside their door. We certainly will replace their trash if they leave it outside. We'll leave a new trash bag for them, um, you know, to refresh. But we cannot enter an occupied guest room at this time. We've got to wrap up, but very quickly, I just want to go to each of you, whether you think these changes are permanent or not, and whether you think they're good for your particular industry or your business. So, Monica. Uh, I'm going to say I am a optimist and I hope that, you know, there will be a solution, there will be a vaccine and we can go back to as things were. Um, I would love to see film festivals return to how they were before um, with movie theaters and 
you know, red carpets and pictures and community face to face. Um, I think that this is a good temporary solution. And I also feel like it would be nice to see the mixture of the two once things are back to normal to still have an interactive, an online interactive version of the festival uh, to reach a wider audience and to make it more accessible for people. Excellent. And Rogers, how about yourself? I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm having the time of my life. I think people are just appreciating the little things more. And obviously this is not sustainable, but I think what we've learned is that we can do it in, in, in any industry, right? And so I, I do think there's some progress that's being made, but I think that the days of showing up to the office to work in any industry are in the past. And so I do think that also the trends that we've seen where people wanted to be home, wanting more space, wanting a dedicated room for X, Y, Z, that's a trend that's here. That ain't going nowhere. So yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of these things stay, you know, from here on out. Excellent. And Jennifer, final words from you? So we certainly hope to get back to the new normal at some point. Um, it was thrilling when we were able to welcome our guests back to the inn on June 8th of this summer. Um, we continue to see it growing. I think as time goes on, as the virus goes down, more people continue to practice the social distancing, wearing the mask, do what we need to do. I think we will continue to see a wonderful um, winter season in North Conway, New Hampshire, and we're really looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today, and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.